And now, earlier this week, we brought you the exciting news that we'll be presenting next Thursday's show live from Downton Abbey's High Clear Castle ahead of the big film release. But uh, before we pay the very famous castle a visit, we thought we should brush up on its history a little bit. And who better to learn from than the one individual who calls the castle her home? <laughs> um, we're not talking about Mary Crawley. In fact, uh, this is Lady Carnarvon. Welcome to the so studio. Lovely it's lovely to, to, to you. see Welcome you. Welcome to our home. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you so much for asking Slightly me. Slightly less here. impressive, I've got to <laughs> no. say. No, well, you've got more light than I do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I that. Um, uh, only just, I would have thought. <laughs> Is it 300 rooms you've got? Something like yeah. that. Wow. Yeah. So the, the history of, uh, of Highclere itself, um, it's been in the family since 1679, I think. And yeah. so when you married the eighth Earl of Carnarvon, was the thought of, you know, that being your home, um, uh, something that you thought about? I didn't think about it because my father-in-law was still alive and I thought he'd live for many more years. So, actually, I didn't give it much thought. <laughs> so that was probably quite good because it's only as it's unfolded that you realise some of the challenges and you just put one foot in front of another rather than um, have a sense of panic about what all, all, the, all that there is to do. Because yeah. it must be somewhat overwhelming. I mean, 300 rooms, it's... So you're right, Holly. Sometimes I do feel quite overwhelmed and other times... It doesn't feel quite so bad. You go for a walk with the dogs around yeah. the gardens and look at the trees and you think, oh, my God. It's very lucky so to lucky. be in that. I mean, it is a beauty. There's nothing quite like it. Well, the, uh, the fact with all of these houses, um, uh, that they're, they're your, that current family member, that team of people is a custodian mm. of it for future generations. And you've got to... You have to keep them running, and these days they have to be run as a as a military business, but also sort of financial business as well. I mean, it has to be a business, doesn't it? Well, it does. I mean, every single month they've got to pay the salaries, and it doesn't come from anywhere special other than the fact we're working to create the events to pay the salaries. There's there's no secret source of money, and I have looked. So in the end, it's the stories, the heritage. I really enjoy writing, and by chance, I bought the Christmas book at the same time as a family film. So that's been a bit of good luck in a sense, although I've worked quite hard writing it. So it's just looking at the marketing platform and seeing how can we best help High Clear with it. And we are so lucky. And Danton, of course, the home of Danton was ITV as well. So it's it's a great story as it went through the TV series. Was there a hesitation when, when the, the, the producers came to you and said, we'd very much like to base Danton here at High Clear? And you're very used to it because you do, you've done festivals and pop videos, music. I mean, it's so, so you're certainly used to that. But that's a big chunk of, of time for you. We didn't know. We didn't know how successful it would be. It could just be a one-off. Mm. In, in the end, it carried on. So I also knew Julian Emma Fellow, so that's one of the reasons they came. And I thought that if I was really unhappy, perhaps I could just sit down and have a conversation. But actually, I trusted them. I thought Julian has a great way with scripts, particularly of this period, mm. round about Gosford Park, and he brings us in and engages, and we all fall in love with so many of the characters. And, I mean, there must be something magical about seeing your home transformed into a working film set and sort of walking in and you've got, you know, Dame Maggie Smith there performing. I mean, what, what are those days like when it's all up and running? So you just see, you just see people and they open every single window in February. Yeah. Then they say, oh, my God, it's so cold, how do you live here? I say, well, we don't open the window. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you do for all the different, Wires, you know, black so, yeah. wiring yeah. things. So, so it looks different when they're making it to what you see on TV, but... Mm. I am. I haven't yet seen the film, so I'm so excited to see it. Well, one of the the parts of the year when I clear burst into incredible magical life is Christmas, and mm. uh, and and your Christmas is there a legendary year and a half's worth of, mm. uh, of research has gone in into this book, and uh, and this we both said this morning this is so far up our I street. Know, I know. It just made me so. It's like it's the perfect combination: Christmas and Downton Abbey's <laughs> home. It's like. Perfect. So what did you put in here? Well, it's stories, it's recipes, because food is at the heart of all of our Christmases. And then planning and preparation. Also, I, I write a story about Christmas at Highclere in 800 AD, because there's been a home at Highclere since at least 749 AD. And I think the visible history of a house like Highclere and the other 
stately homes is, is like an anchor for us all in a quite tumbling and difficult world at the moment. So I think houses like Highclere and the sense of history can give us a great sense of reassurance. I thought, we need a lot of reassurance. Start in 880, <laughs> and then I've done a few other parts as well, and then moved forward to Christmas. Today, it's about memories and my memories of my mother making, you know, using up the turkey and um, macaroni cheese. You know, some of the dishes are very straightforward and others are what Paul the chef might do. I'm just a family cook who loves standing around cooking and chatting as I do with you, you know, sharing it. And Paul is a very talented chef, so it's a bit of a mixture between the two, a bit of argy-bargy. Well, okay. it's a beautiful book Thanks and we you. cannot wait to come to your home next oh. week. And thank you so much for having us. Thank you so much for asking me. Thank Looking you. Looking forward to seeing you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.